It is written in Texas history books that Jane Long was the first known woman of English descent to enter Texas and bear a child. She is therefore known as the mother of Texas. Now there is some question as to whether she is the first, but that isn't what this story is about. It's about Jane's love and courage. Jane's husband was one of the first Texas pioneers. Though this account starts with her husband's plans to enter Texas, the story really begins when Jane was a young girl and her father died. For financial support, her mother had to turn to influential relatives. Then her mother died. And Jane's uncle, General James Wilkinson, the commanding general of the United States Army, became her guardian. When the general retired, he and his wife moved to Natchez, Mississippi, taking Jane with them. James Long was from Missouri and had been trained to be a doctor. He had been a hero in the Battle of New Orleans. After that battle, many of the wounded were taken to Natchez, Mississippi. It is there that the young doctor met Jane. After a short courtship, they announced to the Wilkinsons that they wanted to be married. The Wilkinsons disapproved of the marriage because Jane was still a teenager. And James was professionally unsettled and of the wrong family class. Jane was determined, and ultimately, the couple were married with the Wilkinsons' blessing. Shortly after the marriage, James gave up his practice of medicine to become a gentleman farmer. Jane was content with this leisurely agricultural life, but James, being ambitious, was not. In 1819, James became involved in a land scheme with General James Wilkinson and a group of Natchez gentlemen. Their plan was to conduct a mission into the Spanish territory of Texas and proclaim its freedom. Spain's grasp on this territory was slipping, and such an expedition, if successful, could prove lucrative to those involved. General Wilkinson sent spies into Texas to determine his vulnerability. This is the story of that expedition and of Jane's quest to find love from her husband, a love that she so desperately Hold it there, boy. Go fetch the general. Welcome to Natchez. I trust you have something for me? We are in our pay. Good. If you'll follow me, gentlemen. Davenport. He'll be working with us. Now, tell us about Texas. Well, sir, we didn't see much of the Spanish, but there's a feeling something's stirring. I don't know why, but maybe it's the way the people react. Did you see Nacogdoches? I didn't, but John went in. Yeah, I went in, sir. Imagine a woman in her condition. I think it's shameful. And Lafitte, did you see him? No one sees Lafitte unless he wants you to see him. Do you think he wanted to see us? I don't expect any help from him. That pirate's only interested in the schemes that benefit himself. Besides, he's about to get himself in trouble with our guy. Yeah, 
I say there's no garrison in Nacogdoches and no special activity in San Antonio either. But I'm afraid we're not going to get any help out of that damn pirate Lafitte. No help from Lafitte? Agents have been unable to contact him. Maybe he'll contact you. I, I don't know. I hope so. A victory or two, he'll come running on his own. Yeah, maybe. But in the meantime, we've got to take the supplies up the Red River and 200 miles overland. It'd be a lot easier with my feet. Well, General, I still think this that we This is no can... place for such serious talk. Uncle, come dance with me, please. Uh, old man like me? No, you all go ahead and have a good time. I've got to speak with Davenport. And then I'm going to retire. Well, good night, Uncle James. And it's been a lovely party. James, isn't it beautiful out here? When you go to Nacogdoches, I want to go with you. James, you cannot go. You're carrying our child. James, Barbara and I made you a flag. It's red and white with a star on it. I want you to fly it in Nacogdoches. You can remember me by it. But after I have our child, I'm going to Texas. James went to Texas, leaving Jane in Natchez, Mississippi. There she gave birth to their second child, Rebecca. When the child was barely a week old, Jane made preparations for the trip to Texas. Roads in the early 1800s were all but non-existent. Transportation was mainly by river. Missy Jane, we ought not go to Texas. We ought to stay here like Miss Wilkinson says. No, Keon. We are going to Texas. Young man, I wish to purchase transportation to Texas. Texas? Yes, Texas. I wish to leave as soon as possible. Passage for three and an infant. Uh, ma'am, we don't go to Texas. Uh, nobody goes to Texas. With all the trouble between the Spanish and the Mexicans, we don't go there. Um, we got transportation to New Orleans, if you like. Young man, I wish to go west, not south. How far can you take me? Well, there's a boat leaving for Alexandria, but it's, it's not the That will be fine. Travel. When? This afternoon at 3 o'clock. But, lady, it's not a Young right. man, I wish to purchase passage. <sighs> yes, ma'am. But I don't think you're going to like it. After a long, hard passage, Jane made it to Alexandria. The trip was difficult, for the boat that took them was hardly a passenger boat. The infant, Rebecca, came down with the fever, and Jane left the child with her sister, who lived in Alexandria. Jane's plan was to pick up the child, and she and James came out of Texas. This would never happen, for the baby died while Jane was gone. All transportation west of Alexandria has ceased with the Spanish-Mexican problems. In fact, it was illegal for American citizens to enter Texas. With the political people, it's not surprising that Jane could find no transportation. In desperation, she sought out help. Keon, wait here. I'll be right back. Yes, ma'am. Texas. My husband, General 
Honorable James Long will pay a fair price to any man that will see me to Texas. Well, if there isn't a gentleman among this miserable pack of cowards, then I'll just go to Texas by myself. Mrs. Long, do you really want to go to Texas? That is what I said, sir. Name's Randall Jones, ma'am. Might be able to make you a few suggestions. Mr. Jones, I'm not interested in listening to any of your suggestions. I'm interested in getting to Texas. Ma'am, I'm not here to offend you. I'm here to offer my help. How? I'm on the way to Texas myself. Guess I could take you along. Mr. Jones, it's not just me. There are three of us. How much is this going to cost me? Well, you can buy the horses. Mrs. Long. I must say, Mr. Jones, you do have expensive taste for horses. I would have thought, though, with all the money I gave you, you could have bought four. Are you listening? Yes, Mrs. Long. Mr. Jones, something has been bothering me. Just why are you taking us to Texas? You don't seem very happy about it. I know your husband, ma'am. Fact is, I'm indebted to him. James? Where do you know James from? Fought with him. Battle in New Orleans. He's a mighty fine doctor, ma'am. Well, you seem in perfect health. Were you wounded? Nope. I saw many wounded in Natchez after the Battle of New Orleans. You were very fortunate, Mr. Jones. And what about our cause, Mr. Jones? Do you intend to fight for the independence of Texas with James? No, ma'am. Well, Mr. Jones, we all have a responsibility to secure Texas from the hands of the Spanish. That land should be part of the U.S., and we intend to have it. Mrs. Long, that land belongs to Spain. <sighs> I'm not going to break our government's treaty just to further some other man's self-righteous desire for power. Self-righteous desire for power? What are you talking about? How can you say that? Oh, I just said it. I believe our government would agree with me. Mr. Jones, please. Okay, Mrs. Long. Have it your way. I still say they're all a bunch of land grabbers. Well, Mr. Jones... I'm going to bed. Yes, Mrs. Long. <laughs> it says here, filthy, drunk, and belligerent. Well, I wouldn't have seen the damn fools either. Look, General. Pizza hard, man. I don't give a damn. I, doubt that those men I want chance. them punished. Yes, sir. 
the devil is going on out here? We've been plodding along for days now. I suggest we make better time. This is long we are making good time. We can't beat these animals into the ground just because you're impatient. Very well then, Mr. Jones. I will take the lead. You may keep up if you wish. Keon, ride with me. But, Mr. Jane... Keon, get on the back of my horse. <sighs> Mr. Jones? Good afternoon, Mrs. Long. Kim, okay. yeah. with your situation here. Your island is nearly impregnable. It has its advantages. Which is exactly why I am here. I believe that our causes can coexist peacefully and profitably. We both seek the emancipation of the Texas provinces. Together, Monsieur Lafitte, our goals are readily attainable. I'm pleased to find you so optimistic. After all, three major expeditions under the direction of able men have failed. I must be blunt, Monsieur Long. What is it that will make your expedition different? We have planned well. The time is right. Our scouts have been throughout Texas. The Spanish are spread thin. Their control over the Texas provinces is weak. They are not occupying the land. We have a strong army. And we are occupying East Texas. And most important, we have the financial backing. Then why do you need me? What do you think together with uh, your army and my ship? We will accomplish this task rather Effortlessly. The feet, there will be war. Well, Mr. Jones, what now? Now, Mrs. Long? Well, now we're going to cross this river. Here? 
You wish to cross here, Mr. Jones? Well, ma'am, there's another crossing up the river about two days' ride. Now, of course, if you want to do that... Very well, Mr. Jones. We'll cross here. Yes, ma'am. Very well. All me, you follow. Mrs. Long, as soon as your horse starts to swim, I want you to hold on to the other side of your saddle, all right? For God's sake, hold on to those reins. Mr. Jones, I know perfectly well how to handle my horse. You know how to swim, Mr. Of course Long. I know how to swim, Mr. Jones. You don't have to keep treating me like a child all the time. Hurling along, man. We don't have all day. I'm coming, Mr. Jones. Texas, Mrs. Long. What? I said, welcome to Texas, Mrs. Long. Texas? Oh, Mr. Jones! Whoa, whoa, don't get too excited yet, man. We've still got about 70 miles to go before we get to Nacogdoches. Well, I was just happy that we got here, Mr. Jones. Yeah, I understand, Mrs. Long. Looks like we got some weather moving in. I suggest we get moving. I think so. So, Mr. Jones? Can't rain forever. Well, I hope this doesn't go on much longer, Mr. Jones. We'll stop soon. Despite our differences, I want to thank you for your efforts, Mr. Jones. I've tried to do my best for you, Mrs. Long. The circumstances, I think you can call me Jane. Jonathan. Sure is pretty. All we need around here is a damn general's wife. Yeah, that's true. Sure is pretty. The general's not here. You fool ahead, that's the general's wife. Now look, from now on it's gonna be yes ma'am. I'm sorry ma'am. Yes Mrs. General. Yes ma'am. Yes ma'am. Whatever you want. And Captain, there is entirely too much drinking going on here. Damn it, man. How in the hell did you tolerate her? She is an extraordinary woman, Captain. Thank you for the drink, sir.
Sam, I'm worried about those reports. What about the Spanish? Are they coming? Jane, I wouldn't worry too much about those reports. But what about James? He can take care of himself. He's got troops and he's mobile. Jane, in my years in Texas, I've learned one thing. You've got to put up with Spanish rumor. It's something you've got to accept. We can't leave without James. Jane, you've got to leave. Perez is coming, and you can't stay here. But what about James? He has scouts. You've got to leave, and now. But I don't want to. Let me wait. We found the soldiers volunteered to take you across the city. The horses are ready. Oh. Sir, I'm ready. Ma'am, I'd be honored to take you and your family out. Jane. Please, ma'am, the general will find you. General Long's expedition was doomed from the beginning. His armies were scattered from the Red River to Galveston Bay. His supplies were seized by the United States, and no help would come from the pirate defeat. With such weakness, Long's outposts were easily overrun by the Spanish armies led by Colonel Perez. The Texas colonists at Nacogdoches ran for the Sabine River and the safety of the United States. Jane, too, wisely crossed the river. General Long, returning from Lafitte's Island, arrived in Nacogdoches two days ahead of the advancing Spanish troops. He, too, crossed the river and was reunited with his wife. With Long's army in shambles, Colonel Perez easily brought East Texas and Nacogdoches under total Spanish domination. Nacogdoches was the gateway to Texas. This old Indian village had known the La Salle expedition in 1687, had been settled by the Europeans in 1716, and had lived under the flags of Spain, France, and again Spain. She had witnessed and taken a part in every filibuster and revolt there was. With General Long's failure, the Spanish authorities ran out in every water they find. The soldiers who had escaped the Spanish and who remained loyal to General Long regrouped on the peninsula Bolivar across from Lafitte's island of Galveston. General Long sent Jane to her sister in Alexandria while he sought financing for a new army. In 1820, the Longs went to Bolivar and there they organized the expedition of 18. Fair. Fit for such a handsome general. You know, James, Lafitte is going to be envious. Jane, I refuse to go to that dinner. I will not give that damn pirate the satisfaction. Can't you just forget about your stubborn pride? Just Jane. It is not pride. It is a matter of honor. You know, maybe I could go to the dinner and talk to Lafitte about some of the recent activities going that on in the That is not your place. Besides, what man would allow such a thing? Especially on a pirate ship. James, we're in this together. Please let me help you. Perhaps you're right. Knowing Lafitte, you may be of help. Thank you. Dinner is wonderful. You do live well. I'm pleased, madame. I must tell you that I am not too disappointed that your husband could not make it. You are a lovely woman. Thank you, Monsieur Lafitte. 
There is a lot of activity on the island. Indeed. You see, we are leaving Galveston. Leaving? We... The United States Navy has uh, suggested that I uh, vacate the island. I believe it to be in our best interest to comply. Excuse me. Have you seen the general? Yes, ma'am. I've seen him walking up the beach away. Thank you. James! James! It feels so good to be near you. I'm very happy here. I know you are. You've been here too long. We've accomplished a lot. And we've been together. This isn't the life I had planned for you. You deserve better than this. It doesn't matter, James. Just hold me. Tell me that you love me. Please, James. I don't want to be separated again. We have to move on La Bahia. Our position is weakened. If we do not establish our presence, We'll have nothing to bargain with. James, I don't want to talk about La Bahia. Just hold me. Hold me, James, and tell me you love me. General, men are ready to leave. James went to Goliad, leaving Jane with a few soldiers at Bolivar. At that time, Goliad was called La Bahia. La Bahia was a Spanish stronghold and fort. With the revolution successful in Mexico, Long knew he had to move quickly. The defenders of the fort were divided in their loyalties. Some were for the revolutionaries, and others were Spanish royalists. With this confusion and their lack of vigilance and discipline, James took the fort without firing a shot. Shortly after James left for La Bahia, the soldiers who were instructed to stay at Bolivar decided that they would leave. Some said the soldiers believed that James was never coming back. Maybe they were just tired. Nevertheless, they offered to take Jane with them to New Orleans. But no, Jane would not go. Her place was at Bolivar. It was there that she would wait for James. James' occupation of La Bahia uncontested was it for long. When the opposition got wind of it, they came quickly. Long aware of his limited resources, now learned the true extent of Texas political instability. Spanish domination had come to an end. Colonel Perez had sided with the Mexican independence movement. James's occupation of La Bahia had placed him in a tight spot. He tried to cast his lot with the independence movement, but his intentions were questioned. Even his troops were sent to the fort. Battle broke out. They exchanged shots for several days. James was able, with his artillery, to hold Perez at a distance. The factors of time and numbers were on the side of Perez.
A strange thing happened then. Perez sent a party to the walls of the fort to converse with James. The party convinced James that they were revolutionaries fighting for their independence, that they were not Perez's forces, and that they had no quarrel with Long or his troops. Leaved them. He was captured and taken to Mexico. No one really knows what took place after that, other than James was imprisoned. Jane was in Bolivar, waiting. It would be a long wait. James was killed in Mexico. The child that was born in Bolivar was named Mary James Long. Broken emotionally and financially, Jane was helped by early Texas settlers bound for Stephen F. Austin's colony. There she recovered her strength. With the aid of Randall Jones and his brother James, she moved to San Antonio where she stayed for 10 months before returning to Louisiana. It was there in Louisiana that her baby, Mary James Long, died. Jane and her family became Texas colonists. She was granted a league of land and made a pledge to pay back all the debts incurred by her husband. Jane lived in the colonies for three years where she was held in high regard, but she made little progress financially. In 1828, she moved to Fort Bend. From there, she sent her daughter home to Natchez. Four years later, she set up a rooming house in Brazoria, and then another in Richmond. With the income from the boarding houses, she was able to repay all her creditors. Early Texas history literally revolved around Jane's boarding houses. Most of the early Texas heroes knew Jane. They lived in her rooming houses and were fascinated with her beauty and charm. To name a few, Stephen F. Austin, William Travis, James Bowie, and Sam Houston. Jane lived to be 82 years old. She died on December the 30th, 1880, in Richmond, Texas. It is there where she is buried.